Well, as you may know, the DSM is a very rough approximation of diagnosis. So that is, uh, you know, most people really think that the DSM is not a very good uh, diagnostic instrument. And even the head of NIH has advocating abolishing it. So the, what happens with, with trauma is in our studies and other people's studies, we found that people who have chronic trauma uh, starting in childhood, it was childhood abuse and neglect, by and large don't do better with, don't do well with any treatment. And actually when the study started, I encouraged uh, MAPS, the people who were funding the study, to not include people who had lifelong histories with trauma, but only people who had post-traumatic stress disorder, i.e. where everything was going okay until a particular event happened. Um, as it turned out, that that was not accepted. And so 88% of the people in the study had lifelong histories of trauma, including abuse and neglect. And the startling thing about uh, the study was that those people did particularly well, and they've never done well before. Uh, and uh, like PTSD, adult onset PTSD, where something terrible happens, tends to respond quite well to any number of interventions, but chronic childhood trauma responds very poorly. And so the, to my mind, the great uh, finding of the study was that MDMA really helped people to get in touch more with much more complex issues than the trauma, but having led a traumatized existence where they were never felt safe, even with their own family. They are sort of the modal PTSD population. Uh, you know, when we first created the DSM diagnosis, we talked about it as people having suffered from an extraordinary event out of the usual realm of human experience. And that shows you something about how ignorant we were at that time uh, because we had not been looking at trauma in the general population. And today we know that very vast numbers of people actually have chronic trauma, and that's not extraordinary at all to have trauma. But um, within the politics of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, uh, the powers that are have really resisted expanding this concept of PTSD in, to include um, the much more complicated cases of uh, early childhood trauma. So in fact, adult onset trauma with one traumatic event is relatively rare compared with your general clinical population, which often has an enormous amount of trauma. It depends on who you're studying. Huh? <laughs> uh, like, in, like in our study on EMDR, uh, the eye movement desensitization, we mm -hmm. found that people did extraordinarily well who had adult onset trauma, who had been okay until that particular horrendous event happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends a bit on your patient selection. And if you look, if you look for adult onset trauma in people who have been well functioning up to that time, it is not all that difficult to treat, actually, for in most cases. And why is that? Because early childhood trauma uh, has an impact on certain mental capacities. And the mental capacity has to do with uh, being able to control your emotions, uh, to make it, not get hijacked by your anger or your fear, uh, and also your sense of identity. Uh, if you have been chronically traumatized, you... Uh, experience yourself as being ineffective. Uh, you tend to be confused. You tend to be unable to focus. And so you have a much more complex um, um, set of mental problems besides that particular memory of the trauma. And it's the, the set of uh, mental functions that really prevents people from getting better. Because if you cannot control your emotions, uh, you become extremely fearful when you start recalling uh, the, the traumatic incidents, and you may actually freak out, shut down, become very agitated, and you cannot go there. Huh? The other thing is that if you have chronic trauma, your memory tends to be distorted, uh, disturbed, you don't know precisely what happened, you don't know precisely who you are, and you're very limited in your capacity to find words for your own experience. And what what's really a startling finding in the big MDMA study is that people who have, who had chronic 
lack of security, lack of safety with other people, we're be able to we're able to find words for their own experience, and we're beginning to be able to communicate what was going on inside of them, which is really some, nothing else that we know of had actually been able to do that. So up to now, we have really have been rather flummoxed by that. Huh? For example, when you're a young child, uh, you tend to be very egocentric. Uh, everything in the world just happens because of you, and you don't really know much about cause and effect. And so uh, if you get abused or uh, assaulted as a young child, you tend to feel like, this is my fault. I must be a terrible person that this is happening to me. Huh? That is very different from being... Um, attacked uh, something like the Boston Marathon bombing a few years ago. Nobody felt like, oh, I'm a terrible person uh, for this to happen to me. It's very clear that it wasn't their fault. And so your, your sense of yourself does not get affected by adult trauma. Uh, you don't think I got raped because I'm a terrible person. No, I met a terrible person who did something to me. When you're a young child, you're on understanding of the world is very differently and everything that happens to you is because of you. So if you get assaulted in the, few, in the early years of your life, you tend to feel this is because I'm a bad person and that very deep sense of uh, badness, of being damaged, tends to stay with people and oftentimes uh, clinicians like to say to people, oh, you're not really a terrible person, but that doesn't seem to change anything in terms of people's internal understanding and concept of themselves. So we have known for a long time that alexithymia is the result of early childhood trauma. That was something that's been known for at least 50 years. Um, and it comes up over and over again. And that has something to do with living in constant fear, that you don't really develop an articulate sense of yourself and being able to uh, articulate your emotions. You know, when you're, when terrible things happen to you, if you cannot com communicate to other people, I'm scared, or uh, can you help to protect me? And you live in a scary environment, you oftentimes don't develop the words necessary to really identify what's going on with you. 